hello everyone. Um, so today I will talk about some new cool features that we recently uh, introduced uh, to Corda ecosystem. So my talk will be very simple. I will talk about three things. So first, we'll talk about tokens. Second, we'll talk about accounts core dep. And last, we'll talk about how to combine both into a very simple app. When you think about tokens, usually what comes to your mind is this, right? But, I mean, some shady coins or ICOs, but forget about it. It turns out that token is a very powerful concept. As an abstraction, um, you can think about it as a carrier of a value agreement between two parties. And this is actually how we model it in Corda. We uh, model it as an agreement um, between issuer and holder, uh, and it represents the claim of the holder to the issuer of the value that the token holds. So it's worth mentioning uh, that issuer is always well-known party in a Corda terminology, and holder can be um, anonymized. Uh, it also holds token type, which can be anything. It can be a cat, it can be a pizza, it can be um, an asset, it can be a house. Let's see um, what other uh, types we have in our uh, token SDK. So first of all, we can split tokens into fungible and non-fungible. Uh, fungible tokens are the um, things that you can split and merge. So for example, pound. Uh, if I have 100 pound note, I can split it into 250s, right? And non-fungible is something that you cannot split or merge. It can be a house, it can be a cat. And probably you know all of this from um, like Ethereum tokens because it's nothing new. Uh, what is new in our SDK is the notion of the evolvable tokens. And I will introduce them uh, briefly. So evolvable token is a state that can change over the time. You can think about, for example, how the valuation can change, right? Or you can, it can be a stock, uh, the price changes, right? And um, because we have this split between token ownership and uh, the actual thing underneath, uh, that's why we have uh, this notion of evolvable token. So uh, how it works, we model them as linear states. Uh, we keep them uh, in the token, fungible, non-fungible tokens as a pointer uh, that is resolved um, in flows and during the verification. And um, it has a like, special mechanism for distributing the updates to, to the token type. This is pretty simple because like, there are not that many types introduced uh, with our core app. Um, so uh, we also have lots of workflows so when you think what you can do with token, um, so there are like three main things that you can do. You can issue tokens. So uh, issue workflow just creates the transaction that has no inputs and has outputs. You can move tokens, so um, yeah, inputs, outputs, possible change. And um, redeem, redeem is special, uh, so it's initiated by the holder with the issuer. That's why issuer always has to be well known. Uh, it has inputs, usually it doesn't have outputs, it can have change. And all of these flows come like in different flavors, uh, so um, I guess we wanted to provide like uh, the building blocks for your application, so it's like, very easy to, to start with something. So we have confidential versions of uh, all of the above, we have fungible, non-fungible, uh, so they're different only by the, how we select states from the vault. And so, yeah, that was a very quick overview of tokens, and uh, I will move to entirely different concept now, uh, accounts. This is another core app developed uh, by our team, and um, it comes from the fact that we realize there is like certain problem. Uh, there are lots of users that would like to be on the ledger, but they don't want to run the node. It's maybe because it involves some money, right? Or uh, it is quite technically involved, and uh, not everyone has to be like this guy. 
And um, so, and there are also use cases where, um, for example, company has employees and uh, it doesn't make sense for each employee to have nodes. Uh, it's better if the, there's one operator that represents uh, employees, the same like, for example, bank and account. And we designed it in a very simple way. So it also is a Corda, although we had to do some changes uh, in the Corda core itself. But conceptually, what is an account? Account is just a um, logical sub-vault in the, in the nodes uh, vault. So here, for example, you can see account one uh, that has like, some states belonging to this account, uh, account two, and also in the same vault, you can have states without assigned account. And how, we, how does it work under the hood? Um, simply, account is uh, just a set of keys and related states. You assign to these keys, you can, you can map keys with the uh, unique identifier, and uh, this is how it is resolved in the identity service. And if you would like to use accounts in your core app, there are no changes in the states, there are no changes in the contracts. Um, so you just use your state as always, just instead of holder, you put their account, uh, account key in the abstract party. Another thing that is worth mentioning, we have special states uh, that are uh, called account info. And uh, this is how you create the account. You share the information about the account. Uh, so uh, it's also pretty straightforward. Uh, account info has name. It has the hosting party. Uh, for like when you start the flows, you need to know where to route the messages, and the identifier already resolved on the host uh, node. We ship this cord up with um, lots of workflows. I will mention only a few of them. So as I mentioned, uh, create account. You can share account info with another node. You can request account info from another node knowing UID. You actually have to request key for an account because uh, probably you already noticed that account info doesn't have information about keys. Every time you want to transact with the account, you have to um, do a flow similar to confidential identities, request a new key, and uh, then uh, put it into the transaction. We also introduced a special way of querying vault, so it only shows you the subset of states that belong to the account. I will show you in the code samples. Um, and yeah, it's hidden behind uh, account service, but there are also uh, initiating flows um, for this. So let's move to the code sample. Uh, it will be pretty quick and simple. Uh, so I have two nodes. One is a bank, the other is issuer. And we will open um, two accounts at the bank node, Rogers and Stefano's account. How it's done? As you can see, uh, we do uh, RPC call, uh, start for create account, Roger, and it returns stent and ref account info that has already all the information about host and un uh, unique identifier for the account. Same for Stefano. And this is how you can see uh, what accounts you have on your node. So you can either call this flow or you can uh, call the service up and uh, uh, account service. The next part will be if issuer wants to issue uh, tokens to uh, Roger account, this node needs to know that there is an account on this, uh, on this node. So we need to share the account info. It's also pretty straightforward. Share account info, the Roger account state, and the identity of the issuer. So the issuer starts the process of uh, issuing tokens. As I mentioned, again, uh, we don't have keys to put into the transaction. So um, issuer has to request the keys. The uh, bank node oh yeah, requests key for account, Roger account, uh, account info. And uh, the bank node will call a key management service and uh, create new fresh key pair and associate it with external ID and uh, the public key will be sent back to the issuer node. This part is actually interesting because it shows that apart from this all like setup of the accounts, uh, the token workflow isn't changed. Um, it, the only thing that is new is that we put the new keeper for the account into the state. Issuer starts to issue uh, the token 
Um, creation of the token is also very straightforward. Uh, so first, uh, we create uh, we, um, we create the object uh, token type with a token identifier and fraction digits. Fraction digits tells us uh, how many digits are after the comma. After that, we need to create the fungible token. And we have lots of utility functions to do that. Uh, this is a Kotlin infix uh, function. So, uh, so we create 100 of uh, yet another token type issued by issuer held by Roger Anonymous Party. And we call issue tokens flow. Pretty simple. And under the hood, it takes care of everything. It constructs this transaction and sends it to the party. So now, on the just as boring bank node, you can actually query the vault and check that we have these tokens, right? So there is a special vault query criteria that takes external IDs and you, um, you need to put there the account ID. It will return the 100 of yet another token. So uh, the last bit is um, moving tokens between the two accounts. The beginning will be exactly the same. First, we need to exchange the keys, and then we'll move the tokens. So key exchange, again, request key uh, for account for Stefano account, request key for account for Roger account. Now we, we will call the uh, move fungible tokens flow from uh, token SDK, and it takes party and amount. Uh, so this is um, a type uh, for, that says like to which party move how many tokens. Uh, so we move uh, 50 yet another token types uh, to Stefano Anonymous Party. And um, like this, are, um, this is the vote query criteria. This is uh, the observer parties, which is irrelevant right now. And the last uh, parameter is uh, the change owner. So uh, we will have 50 tokens paid back to Roger. So this flow um, also is pretty automatic. It, what it does, it like, um, selects the tokens, generates spans, uh, and uh, constructs the transaction. And uh, if you want to no learn more, uh, we have really good um, tutorials, and uh, both projects are open source. So you can go to GitHub, to token SDK, and to accounts. That's it. Thank you. Having the ability of multiple accounts on one single node, hypothetically, you could abstract an entire distributed network on just one node, couldn't you? Because you could have multiple accounts on just one single node. Uh, but you need to notarize transactions, right? You could just, but then, mm. my point is that if one node can hold different legal entities and different mm -hmm. legal entities can have different accounts which have their tokens, then what's the point of having different nodes in a, in a regular order architecture? Mm. One could save costs, right, by just... So first of all, uh, as I mentioned before, um, there is, it's just logical uh, separation of states. It's not like real vault separation of states. This is first problem. Second, you want to, uh, if you run the node, you want to have control over your private keys, right? Uh, in this model, you don't do that. And uh, also, you need some um, source of truth, uh, for example, notary, right? Uh, that uh, prevents you from double spends, for example. And so this also wouldn't work uh, in this case. Uh, just one question. Um, is there any support for uh, having like the private key not stored inside the node so that you can... Uh, <laughs> I was, I, was, I was going to finish this presentation uh, with that, actually. There will be another talk by m one of my colleagues, uh, by Stefano, that sits next to you. Oh. <laughs> and he will uh, talk about off-node signing. Oh, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.